Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 11 for Principles of Management course. I am Dr. Shikha N. Khera, your mentor for this course from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. Session 11 is dedicated to the concept of management by objectives, which is one of the planning tools also for the organizational managers. Now students, what is management by objective? How it helps the manager? It helps the manager by telling the subordinates about what are the clear-cut objectives they have to attain, the roles and responsibilities they have to follow, what is the timeline they have to achieve within which the given targets or the goals and it is jointly discussed thus there is an alignment between the manager and the subordinates. So students let us have a detailed discussion on the concept of management by objective. Now having said about the introductory note on management by objective, here I would like to highlight that this was the technique which was given by renowned researcher Mr. Peter F. Drucker. MBO encourages joint goal setting to develop and achieve the objectives of organization department and the individual. So there are three parties which together jointly decide upon the goals. This concept has a uniqueness in it that it enables the subordinates to get involved in the evaluation process and this evaluation process is by setting the goals together. It is nowadays extensively used for goal setting and planning in the organization and also for performance evaluation. So in this we may say that the MBO process aims at ensuring multiple things. One, active employee involvement in the planning process. And basically, it involves consultation between the employee and the manager. So, the specific performance goals are jointly determined between the two parties in the organization and progress towards accomplish these goals is periodically reviewed as well. Rewards are allocated on the basis of progress towards this goal which becomes a highly motivating factor for the subordinates to participate in this process. So one thing an MBO system should provide is a focus, focus on the goals to be achieved by each member or objectives to be achieved by each member. Most people disobey this rule and they try to focus on everything. Now when focus is on everything, you are not clear about your own roles and responsibility and hence you end up with no focus at all. So important point here with MBO is that one must have a focused goal. Certain specific definitions of MBO which describe the joint goal setting by superior and subordinate. It is first by James Stoner who says management by objective is a formal set or procedures that establishes and reviews progress towards common goals for managers and subordinates. Stephen P. Robbins, another renowned researcher in the field of management has noted that management by objective is the process of setting mutually agreed upon goals. So this is an important aspect. The agreement is there between the manager and the subordinate and using these goals to evaluate employee performance. William M. Pride mentions that management by objective is a motivation technique in which managers and employees collaborate in setting up the goals. So students you can see the features of MBO from the definitions itself. It helps in motivation, 
it is a common agreed upon goals and it helps in establishing and reviewing the progress towards the common goals let us now understand the features of this process of management by objective based on the definitions of mbo which we have just discussed there are lots of features which we can summarize what are these mbo is a system or process designed for supervisory managers who directly deal with employees it places relatively more emphasis on goal formulation and what should be accomplished than goal execution that is how it should be accomplished so these are the two answers mbo gives in mbo discussions and agreements are inherent features of goal setting further managers and subordinates they jointly set specific goals that are to be accomplished within a specific time frame also the subordinates are directly responsible for goal outcomes and goal progress reviews and revaluations meetings between subordinates and sub, sub superiors are essential for mbo process the goals are mutually agreed and they act as the yardsticks or the standards on which performance of subordinate is later on evaluated in mbo goal accomplishment becomes the sole basis for assessing and rewarding the subordinate this enables us to understand that how important mbo process is in the organizations now further managers need to identify key result areas in organizational activities as part of mbo why mbo must give due attention to kras because it helps in giving us continuous improvement of kras so that the desired level of performance is achieved what are key result areas they are those critical areas on which the organizational higher goals are dependent upon the philosophy behind mbo is that it enab to enable subordinates to have a clear understanding of their roles and responsibilities and also they should understand how their activities lead to accomplishment of their goals so that means it enables the subordinate to understand the value or worth they have in the organization because of this their activities lead to achievement of organizational goals now these are the steps in mbo that are followed in different phases so mbo involves the following phases what are the phases in it projecting goals discussing them developing executing and providing feedback let us now see what are these in detail first is projecting goals under this the subordinates are asked by their superior to propose their own preliminary goals so students here the subordinates has to brainstorm themselves and come up with their own first level goals for a given period of time and these goals should be in harmony with the corporate and the departmental goals after the goals have been projected well by the subordinates the next stage is that these projected goals are discussed with the superiors or a brainstorming session takes place between the superior and the subordinate which elaborates on goals if necessary and later on they can modify on the goals before reaching to an agreement regarding the specific goal for the subordinate who has projected the goal once these stages are over then we move on to developing the yardsticks that is superior in consultation with subordinate develops the standards or yardsticks for measuring the performance to determine how far the objectives have been met so here these yardsticks are measured in congruence with the goals set that these are the goals x y and z and these are different yardsticks to measure these goal achievement that is abc next stage is executing performance reviews since we have already set the yardsticks now superiors they review the employees actual and agreed performance periodically to assess the progress and problems in goal accomplishment there if any gap is found that gap is highlighted by giving the feedback 
So providing feedback after assessing the progress superiors should discuss with the subordinates the ways and means for improving the performance if needed. There can be chances that there is less gap or maybe no gap between the actual and agreed performance then probably it may be highly rewarding and motivating for the employee. Now that we have discussed a lot about what is the concept of MBO and then the process of MBO, let us see are there any benefits of having this MBO program. I am sure students by now after listening to this much of session you may be in a position to highlight various benefits of this technique. Since MBO is a modern management technique, it brings many benefits to the organization. One of the chief benefit that it brings in is that it increases organizational effectiveness through optimum utilization of human and physical resources. It creates a sense of commitment among employees for goal accomplishment. It empowers employee to make decisions and improve their motivation and job satisfaction. It makes employees feel that they are important part of the organization. It maintains harmony that is absolutely important for high amount of coordination in the organization. If harmony is not there between employee employer relationship there can be disturbances and conflicts on regular basis. So this harmony between the relationship through periodic, periodic reviews and interaction between managers and the employees. It is basically a non-specialist technique which can be used by all types of managers. So not much to be troubled here. All types of managers can utilize this technique. Now a question arises that does MBO work? We have discussed the benefits of MBO as well. Yes. MBO definitely works if the top management commitment and involvement is very high in the organization. There can be certain potential problems with MBO as well. What are these problems? It may not be effective in dynamic environment because it deals with setting up of objectives. Now since we are setting up objective today at this point in time, maybe because of turbulence in the environment, the goal or the objective does not remain true in near future. So in turbulent and dynamic environments, we cannot think of MBO. Also MBO may become a regular paperwork shuffle only. That is it is there on papers but may not be executed and implemented in the right spirit. Also it has overemphasis on individual accomplishment which may create problems with teamwork. And this may lead to some kind of interpersonal conflicts. So now let us move on to limitations of MBO. Though MBO is a complete system of planning and control in itself and a complete philosophy of management but still it suffers from certain limitations. And what are these? MBO is a time consuming process. Since it involves continuous goal setting, frequent reviews and constant feedback, it takes a lot of time by both the manager and the subordinate. This method is found to work well for managerial jobs only as goal setting for employees at non-managerial level is usually not feasible. And it remains a non-starter unless the process begins at top managerial level of the organization. So that top level management inclusion is very important. Now I have got an exhibit here which are some common management reward follies suggested by Kerr and others which is summarized in the following table. He criticized including the objective criteria and characteristics of most MBO systems. Now what are the common management reward follies here? He says that organizations they hope for certain things but actually they often reward in certain different manner. So they hope for long term growth and environmental responsibility but 
they go for quarterly earnings for reward they hope for team work rather they often reward the individual work they hope for setting challenging stretching the goals rather they reward achieving objectives which is making the numbers so not in congruence with each other they hope for downsizing right sizing and restructuring strategies and rather they go for adding budget and adding stuff they hope for commitment towards quality rather often they go for shipping on schedules and even with effects so they are more focused on the time for delivery than on the quality as they actually hope for quality but they go even with defects at time to fulfill the scheduling process students albert s humphrey in the year 1960s came up with a concept of strength weakness opportunity and threat analysis for the organization which is useful for all types of organizations all management functions and all activities what is this tool all about this tool helps management to summarize structure and evaluate the information gathered on organizational internal and external environment as a part of planning process this analysis enables organizations to see both positive as well as negative side of the situation so that they can prepare themselves according to whatever the scenario is it helps organization to decide whether their goals and objectives are attainable or not why we say so the attainable or not because depending on the swot positioning they will get to know whether they need to bring in change into their objectives or not in case the results of swot analysis project the goals as unattainable the managers can quickly formulate the alternative goals sometimes swot analysis is done even before the formulation of goals and objective takes place so as to understand how the environment is behaving this allows the organization to set only attainable and objective goals however the effectiveness of goal setting depends on accuracy of swot analysis and it focuses on internal strengths and weaknesses of the organization and external opportunities and threat that the organization possesses we shall now discuss these each parameter in detail strength of the organization now when it comes to strength of the organization they may come from various parties so what are they it can be the resources which can be strength maybe technology in terms of technology in terms of say machinery people in terms of competence or capabilities products because of the features potentials and capacities of the organization in terms of their physical resources various practices and programs which are both organizational individual and team focused and past successes all these then become the strength of the organization in this the strength of people may include their unique competence and ability etc now what happens when an organization has these strengths it lead directly to a scenario what is called as competitive advantage now here the unique management styles large and good public image of organization effective training and development programs for employees strong customer loyalty well built capital base and best compensation policies are example of strengths for the organization now what are then weaknesses weaknesses are basically those trouble factors which exist inside the organization so the same factors that constitute the strength of one organization can be the weaknesses for another organization like for example 
weaknesses can be resource constraints maybe because of weak financial health of organization uncooperative attitude of the employees so because of some kind of disharmony or discord between people high absenteeism which may cause high amount of loss to profitability and productivity labor turnover again with high amount of labor turnover the result is non productive output poor competitiveness you have obsolete machinery technology and competitive uh, competence which will not lead to high competitive behavior on your part absence of employee training because of again maybe lack of funds that we already had lack of effective control outmoded practices and are some of the general weaknesses of the organizations what are opportunities opportunities are present in the external environment opportunities are those factors which enable a manager to identify or forecast that we have already done in the previous session to predict if there is a chance to come up with production of a new product or to add on new feature to the existing product to add on new skill and training competence to the employee because you see a boom in particular set of businesses in near future or maybe in long term so those becomes the opportunity for any organization to exploit if the organization already carries certain competencies maybe say technology or machinery which they can utilize to exploit such scenarios outside which are available in the environment they seek it as an opportunity for further growth and expansion so they may include positive situations and factors related to business of organization but remain outside its control organization usually seek to benefit from these opportunities by formulating new goals or modifying the existing goals new government policies new markets exit of competitors availability of new technology change in interest rates and change in population characteristics are some of the examples of external opportunities now there can be chances in the environment that rather than having a positive environment where we seek some kind of supportive environmental conditions for expansion or growth of business by new investments there can be situations which can be highly dangerous if the organization thinks of moving ahead these are called as threats to the organization even a high amount of competitive advantage on the part of the competitor can pose a danger to the existing organizational setup so thus an organization has to be highly vigilant and alert all the time to find out that whether there any threat exists outside so let us see what are various threats threats are the developments in external environment which can directly and negatively affect the business interest organization normally have little or no control over these developments and they may pose danger to the survival of the organization or maybe for growth adoption of new business strategy by the competitor as i have explained political uncertainty entry of overseas competitors exchange rate fluctuations economic slowdown negative publicity of the company are some of the examples of threats which an organization may face now what happens once the information on its external and internal environment is collected that is we have understood the strength weakness opportunity and threats now the experts can conduct specific goal oriented and need based analysis of this information this they have gathered while carrying out swot analysis manager must see whether the existing organizational strengths can help in exploiting the emerging opportunities and they must also check whether the elimination of weaknesses could open new opportunities for the business so these are the tasks that the manager has to do once they have collected the information of swot analysis while dealing with business threats manager must decide whether these threats are manageable or not and whether they pose short term or long term threat to the organization before deciding the future course of action 
as a mandatory requirement for any phenomenon whenever that takes place we need to go for evaluation of that phenomenon well why evaluation again students this evaluation help us to identify the gap or to get a feedback which will eventually become a tool to improve ourselves so what are the some important benefits of organization that SWOT analysis provides to organization this includes first it provides a framework for formulating and reviewing the goals. The second benefit is it helps an organization to conduct a self-evaluation to know exactly what is the present position. A very valid outcome of SWOT analysis. Then further it helps the organization to recognize the core competencies and capabilities. Moving ahead. Another benefit is that it gives or develops a balanced perspective of organizational situation by presenting to the organization both positive and negative side that is threats and opportunities and finally it helps the organization members to make rational and logical arguments before they go for any kind of goal development. So these are some benefits of having SWOT analysis in the organization but however SWOT analysis cannot be completely trusted for decision making. Why so? because there is a limitation also and what is the limitation? Limitation is the lot of subjectivity is involved in analysis of information pertaining to internal and external environment of the organization. It also helps few other limitations that can undermine the importance of SWOT analysis. Now what are these in limitations? Managers make use of SWOT analysis at the time of goal formulation and then afterward they tend to ignore it. Because of which probably once they have formed the goal, it may not be true for a long term period. They need to amend it time to time or see to it whether it is right in the current context. In other words, it does not does nothing for mission or goal accomplishment. And in dynamic environment which poses challenge for organization, managers need to perform SWOT analysis at regular intervals, at periodic intervals all through the plan period to identify recent trends in environment and this they may find it difficult to do. It is an overview approach or general idea which is unsuitable for present day diverse and high volatile environment. It merely discusses or describes the situation in matter of fact style without any worthwhile analysis. So SWOT analysis is also time consuming and a tiring activity. So maybe managers of large organizations and they have to consider too many factors and convince too many people in hierarchy they may not like the idea of going for SWOT analysis. And instead of prioritizing the elements of strengths and use weaknesses which are useful for decision making, the SWOT analysis simply generates the list of these categories that is strengths, weakness, opportunity and threat. So a list is created rather than the analysis of it. So managers may be inclined to compare the longer list of strengths with shorter list of weaknesses to conclude that the organization is performing well. So then it becomes a trouble factor. And no meaningful comparison is possible without knowing the relative worth of each strength and each relative worth of each of these strengths or weaknesses to the 
organization. So, this relative worth needs to be identified. Now, students, we have discussed about the concept of management by objective. Let us try to have some insight on another important aspect which pertains to the concept of planning and forecasting deals with goal formation that is strategy. What is strategy friends? Strategy which has emerged from a Greek word strategos means commander in chief. It also in indicates the game plan or a plan or a tactics that an opponent or a competitor makes to win over the competition. Thus, the organizations in today's time also are involved in different categories of strategies which we shall be discussing soon in the session. Let us see what are different types of strategies and what is the concept of strategy. In simple sense, strategy means a systematic and detailed plan of action. And this term refers to specific courses of action undertaken by higher level of organization to accomplish pre-specified goals. There can be different levels of strategy in the organization. These levels of organizational strategy are corporate level, business level and functional level. The focus and requirement of each strategy will differ depending upon the level the strategy is in. We shall be discussing this in detail. However, the corporate level strategy is further specified into two categories that is growth strategy and portfolio strategy along with parenting strategy. Let us see the diagrammatic view of all this details. It says that levels of strategy three levels which we have already highlighted corporate business and functional and further corporate is divided into growth portfolio and parenting. Let us see the first strategy that is corporate level strategy. What is corporate level strategy? It is dealt with by the top management which deals with the scope of the organization. Here top management tries to answer to the question that how we can create value or worth for the organization. So big decisions like various growth, expansion, restructuring, liquidation, all such things are done under the category of corporate strategy. So corporate strategies usually deal with basic questions such as creating worth for entire organization. Top level managers make wide ranging decision concerning to the direction in which the organization will move. So they have what we call it as that they have steering wheel of the organization in their hand and they set the direction of organization as the captain does. Organization usually makes decision on market or industry in which they compete, they, mer they decide upon whether they have to go for merger, they have to go for amalgamation or whether they have to go for some kind of diversification etc. Similarly, through corporate strategies, an organization decides on building organizational capabilities and core competencies. Why organization thinks of building capabilities and core competencies? Because these capabilities and core competencies tomorrow will enable the organization to go for strategies like mergers, acquisitions or amalgamations or maybe expansion or growth and thus leading to having higher competitive advantage. Now what happens students when we reach for higher competitive advantage in the organization? We reach for something called as above average returns. So this above average return is something AAR. This is always every organization wants to have returns at higher basis. Next strategy is growth strategy which is the sub part of the corporate level strategy. The growth strategy deals with concentration, 
strategy is this is adopted by organization when business is in existing industry at a safe level profitable level and attractive for further expansion growth strategy deals with development and accomplishment of growth objectives so the main aim here is to grow to expand so it can be further classified into categories like concentration strategy or maybe second is the diversification strategy now let us see what is concentration strategy the organization here can implement concentration strategy through vertical or horizontal integration now student what is vertical integration when you are either integrating backward or you are integrating forward so how do you do so for example a paper bag manufacturer integrates with someone who manufactures paper itself so he is having a backward integration or we call it as a vertical integration backward vertical integration what is horizontal integration when you integrate at the same level one of the famous example here is facebook took over or acquired instagram so that is an example of horizontal integration the vertical integration organization develops strategies to expand within the existing industry by taking over the functions performed earlier by suppliers or by others while in horizontal integration it involves acquisition of additional business activities which are similar in nature to the existing business activities then comes the portfolio strategy this strategy aims at constantly revising the portfolio of business units on the basis of risk and return portfolio strategy deals with determining the portfolio of business unit so what do, do we mean by portfolio of business unit that what are the new portfolios that we are adding on to our existing business line it views each business unit as an investment for the organization and as such it aims at getting good returns out of each unit so that is the aim of portfolio strategy the purpose of portfolio strategy is to allocate resources to those products and services that ensure continuous success or those products that get greater returns but with higher risks so portfolio strategy overall strives to ensure that collective profitability of all businesses in portfolio enables the organization to attain its performance objectives successfully and the third sub category of corporate level is parenting strategy under parenting strategy the last comp which is the last component of corporate level strategy it aims at allocating resources amongst different business units of the organization with optimum efficiency so like a parent who's a nurturing parent who tries to allocate all the share to all divides the share equal amongst all children this is what parenting strategy is for optimum efficiency resource allocation takes place it seeks to build organizational capability across the business units of the organization not focusing only on one particular unit the strategy may also involve among others identifying the key factors of the organization determining the priority in resource allocation ensuring better utilization of resources capabilities and coordinating the different activities in an efficient manner the second category of strategy is business level strategy here it deals with the question on like how to achieve competitive advantage in each business that the organization is having so it is concerned with development of strategy for a single business organization in case of diversified business organizations business level strategy means formulating a strategy for any one of the strategic business units so that is business level strategy each business unit is treated as an independent unit and a profit center independent profit center it can develop its own business level strategy 
in order to successfully compete in market for individual products or services. So it focuses mostly on creating and sustaining the competitive advantage for products through one or more distinguishing factors. So when we talk about distinguishing factors that can be maybe price or cost leadership. These become your distinguishing factor for specific business unit. Also product differentiation can be a distinguishing factor. And finally, the essence of a competitive strategy is about being different from the competitors. And in this case, the strategy involves a deliberate decision to perform differently in market to deliver something which is unique mix of values. So for instance, factors like advanced technology or maybe unique product features. They can be the distinguishing factors. After this comes the third level of strategy that is the functional level strategy. At the functional level strategy, specific strategies are made for functional activities of the organization which are generally for short period of time and for specific functional unit like HR, finance, marketing, etc. So it may encompass production, marketing, purchase, finance, research and development, other similar activities of firm. Each functional area covers several tasks. Similar issues may arise in each one of the functional areas requiring an appropriate strategy. For example, HR function may require a strategy to recruit the employees or to train the employees. Here the functional level strategy will address issues such as whether to carry out the task through in-house resources or they may go for outsourcing. Outsourcing is employing some consultant from outside or agency from outside to get the job done. So whether the functional level strategy has to be done in-house or whether it has to be outsourced, this is what ad is at the discretion of the manager depending on multiple factors. So, Finally, it is essential to ensure that all strategies of organization they contribute effectively to accomplishment of overall objective of the organization. Also, the functional level strategy should effectively supplement and support the corporate level strategies and the business level strategies in right spirit so that the goal achievement takes place properly. Moving on further, since we have discussed about various strategies that organizations follow, the reason behind discussing those strategy was to move on to the concept of strategy quality, strategic quality planning. Every organization strives today for higher quality or better quality assurance and quality control. And that can be achieved with the help of concept of strategic quality planning. So, this strategic planning, quality planning focuses on improvement of quality standards that has become one of the primary areas of strategic planning. Different organizations are adopting different quality strategies that is the plans as part of their quality initiatives. And what can be the examples for this? This can be total quality management. Another example can be Kaizen or business process re-engineering. It also can be quality, function, deployment. These are all examples of strategic planning in the organization, strategic quality planning in organization. ISO 9000 series, maybe 9000, 2000. Then we have Six Sigma as another strategic quality planning tool. Also lean manufacturing serves the same purpose. So several organizations are in a view of strategic quality plans and business plans are inseparable. If you have a business plan, that business plan must have a strategic quality plan. 
Fast paced developments in quality management and quality control fields have also forced the organization to set new quality goals and devise quality plans. However, strategic quality planning becomes core activity of organization when it wants to make quality a tool to achieve the overall business goal. This is because customer satisfaction is highly essential quality measure. So, it is dominating both quality plans and business plans. In the concept of strategic quality planning, there are certain steps involved in it. These steps are ensuring customer focus, ascertaining industry benchmark, examining strategic vision and mission statement, developing statement of quality, establishing quality standards, preparing quality strategies and developing strategy measurements. Let us discuss these one by one. Ensuring customer focus. The very first step says that in strategic planning, quality planning, the primary focus is to identify and understand customer needs, expectations, aspirations and preferences. So, customer defines and judge an organization's quality initiative by accepting or rejecting the products or the service. Here, Customers alone drive the quality initiatives, goals plan of the organization, the quality expectation of the customer must be understood well in by the quality planners and these planners must define these specific expectations regarding the customer base, market scenarios and the product. And they must also decide whether they want to retain the customer, expand the customer or they want to reduce the customer. All these questions to be answered during ensuring customer focus. Second is ascertaining industry benchmark. Now what is a benchmark? Benchmarks are the standards which are set in the industry against which every organization strives to reach up to that. So, it is the process of comparing an organization's business practices to industry's best practices and the best practices from industry, other industries can also be compared. So, the important dimension of such benchmarking are how people or organizations can be benchmarked. They can be benchmarked on quality, time, cost and parameters like focus on customer needs. Next step in strategic quality planning is examining strategic vision and mission statement. Now what are vision and mission statements? They are the essential elements of planning process and they are basically the philosophy of management. So, strategic vision and mission statements provide a sense of direction to the organization as a whole. So, thus since strategic vision and mission are capable of giving the guidance to the organization's strategic choice such as whether they go for strategic quality planning, improvement or control, what are the measures that they have to take to improve organizational functioning, they should carefully examine and top management can also show its commitment to quality by making a special mention of its mission statement. Mission statement that they have already projected. Quality planners should first understand organization commitment level to quality. That is an important parameter to understand what is the focus on quality given by the organization and this commitment to quality can be seen through the vision and mission statements before actually choosing the appropriate quality goals and plans. Then comes developing statement of quality. Once we have reached to this stage, before formulating quality goals, planners need to develop a relevant statement of quality if the organization does not have a quality statement already. So, in this case, 
a statement of quality already if the statement of quality already exists it has to be examined to ensure that it is still relevant and it has not been deviated because of change in environment. The statement of quality will identify the overall goal and objective of quality for the organization and it also specifically tells the employees and others about their organization's pursuit of excellence. This is the job of the quality statement that already exists in the organization. This lays out organizations working practice also, what are the working practices they have. Also tells the outside members about the commitment of the organization to provide high quality. Next stage is establishing quality standards. So, in this the quality standards are actually the measurements that help identify the extent of employees commitment to quality statement. So, quality standards developed by planners are expected to ensure that employees perform their activities within the scope of quality assurance programs. Quality standards also ensure that employees follow their established policies and procedures in performance of their work. By this if they adhere to these policies and procedures there are greater chances that they will reach to high quality output of as desired by the customer. Now preparing for quality strategies include that planners develop quality plans and strategies as part of this task. Now the planner should first do what it must identify, he must first identify the gap between the current state and the expected future state of the organization as described in mission statement. So, mission statement becomes the guideline. Quality strategies are prepared to close the quality gaps if any in establishing relevant and specific goals and responsibilities. Further quality strategies are expected to convert the strategic quality vision and quality statement into reality. It will tell precisely what the organization will do over a planned period to ensure that statement of quality is fully achieved. And then developing the strategy measurements. So here students the development of right measures is critical to the efficient implementation of quality strategies. Now what do we mean by measure the right measures? Right measures means that we are identifying the quality standards correctly and accurately. Planners must ensure the strategy measures are relevant, useful and specific without which even if we go for quality strategy we will not gain much. The right measures will provide basis for determining how well the organization meets its quality strategy and how close they are to goal completion. Once we have developed the strategy measures, it is time to implement the quality strategy because without execution and implement, we cannot of course get the outcomes. So strategy implementation is process of allocating resources to support the chosen strategies. This process includes the various management activities that are necessary to put strategy into action, to monitor the progress and eventually attain organizational goals. The implementation of quality strategy involves designing the organization structure. So, this is one point allocating the resource and third communicating information and decisions and then managing the human resources. If we are able to do these pointers then implementation of quality strategy is done in a positive manner. It involves the task of overcoming resistance to changes also through appropriate change management technique. So it involves the task of overcoming resistance to change through appropriate change management techniques. So students let us have an example on the quality policy of an Indian organization. So this is quality statement of UB group which mentions that 
quality statement of one of the leading companies UB group reads as quality readership is vital to long term success of the UB group. So, this is the key takeaway. It is an increasing competitive marketplace. UB group is striving because of the quality leadership. Building quality into workplace products services is essential to a successful future of our customers, employees, suppliers, community and stakeholders. This is the vision of UV group. The UV group will work to provide products and services that allows meet or exceed the expectations in 360 degree level. The management will commit resources and create an environment in which employees can contribute their skill, talents and ideas to a never ending process of improvement and innovation in all aspects of business. So, here you can see students that how quality initiative at this Indian organization is striving towards achieving the competitive marketplace in the organizational setup. This is the bibliography students which I have referred for for this particular session. You may also look into these books for better understanding of the concept. And here we come to the end of this session which pertained to discussion on various aspects of management. I hope students you have understood and gained the insight from today's session and that is all. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, 
it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.